Good morning to everybody. And allow me to, in particular, recognize Mr. Neko van Neerkirk, CEO of Safripol, as well as all of the senior management of Safripol gathered here today. And of course, our esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to address you today. And I'm really sorry that uh, we have uh, conflicting um, diary engagements that doesn't allow me to be with you in person. I thought I would begin by looking at the concept of sustainability because this is a, an important principle which you know is central not only to environmental and conservation processes, but now, of course, it's also an important principle that guides development discourse and informs indices such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And we can define sustainability as a process that can be maintained or supported over a length of time without depleting irreplaceable natural resources. Now, inherent in this concept is the idea of intergenerational justice, namely that our current practices must not detract from the ability of future generations to sustain life on earth. Now, when we look at the plastic sector, we know that plastic products are used daily by billions of people across the globe. But we also know that more than 400 million tons of plastic waste is being produced every year. And this problem of plastic waste contributes to pollution, environmental degradation, and it's also now starting to directly impact on food and water security. So it's clear that the question of plastic waste is becoming an intergenerational justice issue. How we manage plastic waste today, how we succeed in overcoming the problems of plastic waste are going to determine the quality of life of future generations. Now, this problem of plastic pollution is so serious that the theme for International World Environment Day in 2023 is to focus on solutions to plastic pollution under the campaign hashtag beat plastic pollution. In our country, we know that we have a large plastics industry that is responsible for creating tens of thousands of jobs. Accordingly, our department has acknowledged that any solution to the plastic pollution problem must involve the important contribution of Safropol and other players in the plastics in industry. Now, this journey in our country of combating plastic waste has not been an easy one. And it's made more difficult by some of the very complex challenges facing municipalities that are undermining waste collection at a local level. And of course, when people don't have regular waste collection, then uh, they take informal measures to dispose of waste and this is very often what leads to plastic leaking into our environment. I must say that industry has been very supportive of our policy interventions and programs, all of which we are working on together to try and promote a safer and a cleaner South Africa. Now, it's useful today just to talk about some of the milestones that we've achieved together over the last three and a half years. First of all, through the support and commitment of the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition, 
there is now an industrial policy action plan and a plastic sector master plan, which supports plastic recycling interventions in the sector. Secondly, our regulations on extended producer responsibility have received very good support from the industry with commitments to provide infrastructure for materials collection and importantly to dignify the working conditions of waste reclaimers who are often at the, at the bottom of the plastic recycling industry. Government is now working with the sector to explore how deposit return schemes could help enhance diversion and collection targets and thereby improve the extended producer responsibility scheme. The amendments we've brought to the plastic bag regulations to embrace circularity have set recycling targets and these are an important milestone to ensure that there is a demand for collected plastic waste. The work of the Plastics Pact has gained significant support from the captains of the plastics industry with the commitment to improve productive processes and make them more environmentally friendly in the up and down streams of the plastic value chain. The joint and collective preparations by civil society, researchers and government for the development of the global treaty to end plastic pollution are receiving commendable support from the plastics industry and industry representatives are part of the intergovernmental negotiation meetings. At an international level, our government has engaged in fora such as the African Ministerial Conference on the Environment, or what is known as AMSIN, and the United Nations Environment Assembly to emphasize our commitment to various instruments aimed at cutting down on plastic pollution and advancing the concept of the circular economy. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last few years, South Africa has witnessed a growing number of people and entrepreneurs who are bringing innovation and long-term solutions in areas such as polymer manufacturing, recycling, and repurposing of plastic materials to avert leakage into the environment. These entrepreneurs have been supported through various programs in government and by the industry through the Alliance to End Plastic Waste Initiative. In its commitment to support the implementation of the regulations of the extended producer responsibility schemes, the sector has agreed to work closely with all spheres of government, especially municipalities, to set up proper infrastructure and systems to enhance the collection and recycling of post-consumer plastic waste. Polymer manufacturers, such as Safripol and Sasol, are being encouraged to take a lead in this regard. Now, there is a need for more investment by the polymer industry in cleaner production and also in more resource efficient technologies. There is a need for more innovation and dissemination of new and environmentally friendly product design for reuse and recycling. Institutions such as the National Cleaner Production Center for South Africa and the South African Bureau of Standards can be of great help in this regard. And I would urge those of you who have not yet explored the offerings of these institutions to do so at your earliest convenience. Let me conclude by wishing you everything of the best for your conference. And I sincerely hope that your discussions will help us to do much, much more to combat the scourge of plastic pollution in our environment. Thank you very much.